All right, 10.3, apply properties of chords. Now, if you guys remember, a chord looks something like this. There are segments whose endpoints lie on the circle. In the same circle or in congruent circles, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. So, arc AB is congruent to arc CD if and only if the chord AB is congruent to the chord CD. Okay, so for example, in the diagram, these two circles are congruent. Uh, also, the chords B, C, and E, F are congruent, and the measure of arc E, F is 125 degrees. Find the measure of arc B, C. Okay, so this equals this. This is 125 degrees. Hopefully, you guys can see that this also has to be 125 degrees. Okay, because B, C, and E, F are congruent chords, incongruent circles, oops, congruence already written, circles, the corresponding minor arcs B, C, and E, F are congruent. So the measure of arc B, C equals the measure of arc E, F, which equals 125 degrees. All right, theorem 10.4. If one chord is, per is a perpendicular bisector, remember perpendicular means it makes a 90 degree angle, and bisector means it cuts it exactly in half. Okay, so if one chord is a perpendicular bisector of another chord, then the first chord is a diameter. Okay, so if you have a chord and it's being intersected by another chord in such a way that it makes a right angle and it cuts it exactly in half, this chord has to be a diameter. Okay, so if QS is a perpendicular bisector of TR, then QS is a diameter of the circle. Theorem 10.5, if a diameter of a circle is perpendicular to a chord, then the diameter bisects the chord and its arc. So, if you know this is a diameter, and there's some other chord that intersects uh, the diameter in such a way that it's perpendicular, then it bisects that chord. So, if EG is diameter and EG is perpendicular to DF, then HD is congruent to HF and... arc GD is congruent to arc GF. All right? Yeah, let's go on to page two. Example two, a journalist is writing a story about three sculptures, probably these, arranged as shown at the right. Where should the journalist place a camera so that it, it is the same distance from each sculpture? Okay. Label the sculptures A, B, and C. Draw segments A, B, and B, C. Okay, so let's do that. Um, actually, I think they have it down here. All right, so ignore this. They drew it nicely down here for you. Okay? So we'll say this is A, this is B, this is C, and we draw it. Draw the perpendicular bisectors of A, B, and B, C. So... If this is AB, I'm going to draw a perpendicular bisector of AB. So it makes a right angle and it bisects it. I'll also draw a perpendicular bisector of BC. Right angle and it's bisected. By theorem 10.4, these are diameters of the circle containing A, B, C, A, B, and C. Okay, so all we have to do is figure out where these uh, perpendicular bisectors intersect, and that's where we want to place our camera. So we find the points where the bisectors intersect. This is the center of the circle through A, B, and C, so it is equidistant or equal distant, equal distance from each point. All right, example three. Use the diagram of circle E to find the length of BD. Okay. So here's BD. This looks like a diameter. Tell what theorem you use. Diameter AC is perpendicular to BD. So by theorem 10.5, AC is perpendicular to, A to BD, and BF equals DF. Then it bisects it. So if this is 6, then this also has to be 6 which means the whole thing has to be 12, because 2 times 6, oh, 
2 times um, BF, I guess, or FD. FD and DF are the same. I guess I could write it the same way. Or 2 times 6, which is 12. Okay. All right, 10.6. In the same circle or congruent circles, two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the center. Okay, so AB is congruent to CD if and only if this equals this. EF, whoop, EF equals EG. Okay, let's go on to page three. In the diagram of circle F, AB equals CD equals 12, and that's labeled. Find EF. Okay, chords AB and CD are congruent, so by theorem 10.6, they are equidistant from F. Therefore, EF equals GF. EF equals GF, so 3x equals 7x minus 8. I'm going to add a few steps. If I subtract 3x from both sides, actually, let's do it the other way. Let's subtract 7x from both sides. So I'm going to get negative 4x equals negative 8. Divide by negative 4, x equals 2. So EF equals 3x, or 3 times 2, which is 6. Alright, and you guys can do the checkpoint, that's all.